I hope that you understand my English. It's not very well, but I try. Um, the, the experience that I talk uh, now is about uh, participatory research in Honduras, building resilient communities. It's a program called, we call Seed of Survival Program, and we work in Uh, this in the uh, very complex context in Honduras. This is our uh, some of the, our statistic da data that we have, and a poverty map. Uh, as we, as you see, uh, these are in the red uh, areas. It's uh, uh, the highest level of poverty in Honduras, and we work in that area in Yoro department and Santa Barbara in Tibuca and Lempira departments. And in that area, it's uh, a highest uh, lands and uh, the most uh, poverty, it's concentrated in that area. That um, uh, We have uh, uh, say 64% of the under poverty line and most of these people live with less than $1.5 a day. And then we have a 40% of in, a, in indigenous, indigenous that we live less from $1 a day. And this is uh, all our statistics that we have in our context. What the strategy of, for the sustainable use that uh, we have, the agrobiodiversity sustainable use. We're talking about uh, agrobiodiversity because it's our, um, our principal uh, research that we use to, um, to strengthen local capacity, uh, to build a, a, a adaptation capacity. We use four of our principal um, components. One is the participatory plant breeding, participatory varietal selection, in situ conservation, and agroecology. We work in that area. This is a map of the Honduran uh, FIPA program work. And uh, we work in 82 commu communities. Um, and Two key crops. What we have, we use key crops because it's the most important uh, crops of our, our diet in Honduras. It's maize and beans. Maize provides 30% of the protein that the Honduran people uh, have in 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 our diets. And beans, uh, it's the most important crops to provide protein in Honduras. That's why we we work using the local resources, the agrobiodiversity, to uh, develop new varieties, to increase uh, the yields, and to have um, uh, food security communities. In situ conservation, we use uh, uh, local and varieties, uh, landrous varieties, and, and wild relatives to uh, conserving conserve these uh, resources in the, the, the communities and identify how these uh, res local resources, the germoplasts, we could use it to develop new varieties or uh, to develop uh, vari varieties that have a nutritional uh, admins like protein or uh, zinc in beans, uh, Iron two in beans, um, and we use this in situ conservation to um, to to strain the capacity of the communities and to have to management the the natural resources, the agro biodiversity resources, to have uh, capacities to start new programs to, to develop new varieties. We don't do, uh, uh, we don't increase uh, the yields only for have more uh, money to, to get, uh, or for have uh, more uh, grains to the market. We increase yields to have more uh, food security. Participatory plant breeding use these uh, this resources, this 
uh, agro, agro biodiversity resources to improve these local varieties, specifically in the highest lands. In Honduras, we have a, a, a big, big problem because all the varieties from beans, maize, and different uh, important crops, uh, especially the basic grains, all the, uh, the improved varieties, it's to the, to the uh, low levels, to the valleys, or, or to these areas, and to the highest lands, we don't have, uh, in the past, we don't have varieties to, to have a good production, a good yields in these areas. That's we use the, uh, the, the participatory, participatory plant breeding with the farmers, with the young people, with the women, to they improve their own varieties that they're going to use uh, in their lands. Participatory varietal selection, it's uh, it's how we spread the, uh, the developed technologies uh, that we have in the participatory plant breeding, uh, some varieties, uh, drought resistance varieties, high temperature resistance, low nitrogenous resistance, and pest uh, resistant varieties, or some of them are biofortified. Um, and we spread this uh, developed variety technologies or, or varieties using participatory varietal selection. And then we use agroecology. Agroecology, it's a holistic approach. It's focused in soil conservation practices, agroforestry systems, uh, to diversify uh, the use of the land and to uh, in, uh, diversify the diet of the people that are working, that we are working. Uh, Removing watershed management, that because we are working in 14 watershed, small watershed in all the country, that's why we use agroecology and promote different technologies uh, that are developed with the farmers uh, to um, spread all these technologies in different uh, communities to have a, a watershed management. Some of our results, we, we have uh, uh, many of them, but some of our results is the members of the families that we work, they are reduced their hunger uh, weeks to 5.63 into 1.63, like uh, four points uh, in five years. And that is one of the our most important uh, results. That because the families, uh, they they know that they reduce the hunger weeks. We call hunger weeks the uh, the time that we don't the people don't have, doesn't have maize and beans to eat, and we reduce this this these weeks. But not only to ha with with uh, a, a good yield. Uh, we use uh, a diversified system uh, uh, with different crops to reduce this uh, hunger weeks. The use of new varieties of bean has represented the increase in yields to 30% from 2010 to 2006 to 2010. 6,000 families from 40 communities of nine departments from Highlands are using new varieties of red beans, uh, product of, of participatory plant breeding and participatory varietal selection. Two of these varieties now the government wants to promote to release in all the country because these two new varieties for the highest lands are, uh, have, have a good yields and there is an, an alternative to the bean production. And now, uh, 100 of uh, the hundred of percent of the farmers involved in the initiative report increase of the interspecific and intraspecific diversity in their farms: maize, beans, agroforestry crops, and vegetables. That impacts in the diet of the people. 40 percent of the farmers involved use more than two varieties of maize and beans. Not only use one. In the past, uh, in the, the traditional uh, or the conventional program of, from the government, promote one or, or variety of maize of beans to plant. And now we have 40% of the farmers that 
using more than two varieties. 200 family from, uh, 2,000 families from more than 100 communities have access to quality seeds of varieties adapted to their, their own agroecological conditions. That impacts because many of these families are using uh, drought resistant varieties or pest resistant varieties. And uh, what I'm talking about that. Challenge for the future. Agroecosystem agri imbalance as a result of increasing climatic var var variability. Uh, we are we are in the heterogeneous country. We have different agroecosystems, uh, and this uh, climatic variety increase these imbalances in agroecosystems. The access to the means of produ of productions, land, water, res water resources for indigenous people and local communities cultural erosion, the high rate, rates of poverty and illiteracy of the rural population, inappropriate policies of subsides and or public sector grants, policies for rural sector development are inadequate and changing environment, environment, and migration from rural to urban areas and developing countries to developed countries. This is the most important challenge that we are facing in, in uh, right now, and we think that with this approach, uh, putting the communities uh, to develop their own technologies, uh, strengthening the capacity of the farmers to to uh, to build resilience, we could um, facing the future. Thank you.